Hello again, it's Miss Jones from Sew with Miss Jones. Today I'm going to show you how to pin on your felt pieces to your pillow so that we can start hand stitching them on. Now, the these pillows are different and, it, and you really have to look at the guide sheet in order to figure out which ones go on first and where they need to go. But Miss Jones did a very bad thing. She misplaced her guide sheet and I cannot find it anywhere. I've been hunting all morning. I have no idea. Maybe my dog stole it. Anyway, I have made these before, so I know what I need to do. And my next thing is to put my pepperoni and my mushrooms onto the cheese. The cheese goes on after the other ones are there. And the reason that I'm doing that is if I attach this to the, if I attach the pepperoni to the cheese, I'm only going to, through two layers. If I attach these after the cheese is, is attached to the pillow, then I have to go through three layers and it makes it a lot harder. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all of my pins and I'm going to put them back in their container so they don't end up on the floor or in somebody's foot. But I'm not going to get rid of this thing, okay? I'm actually going to use it to help me place my pieces. And honestly, with the pizza, you could prob probably put them anywhere you want. But I'm going to show you what you would do if you had the one of the other kinds where you have to have them in a certain spot. So the way that you do this is, and in fact, I think I'm gonna keep one in here just so it'll kind of keep it from shifting around too much. So what you do is you lift up the paper and you lay it down and then you feel around the edge to see if it's in the correct spot. Mine needs to go this way just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to lift the paper up again and put one pin in. Now I can put more pins in later, but for right now, I just want to get them in the correct spots. You can do this all at once if you want to, or you can, in fact, this one, I've got to sew this one on before I can sew that one on. So I'm not going to put the mushroom on top of it. So lift up the paper. I'm putting the pepperoni underneath. Feel around the edges, and it should be pretty close to what you have. And then I'm going to put a pin in. Take a pepperoni. Sasha's shaking her head. That's pretty close. It might do just a little bit. A little bit more that way. Okay. Now, when I demonstrated how to do uh, the stitch that I'm going to use, I used a color of thread that was didn't match. But I want you to use whatever color of thread you have that is the closest because we want these stitches to be as invisible as possible. So I have another one over here. I'm just gonna show you how to do the, the pepperoni and then I'll, I will, um, I'm actually going to then go ahead, do the pepperoni, do the mushrooms, and uh, I'm not gonna come back until after um, I have all of them stitched. Oh. I put that there and forgot a pin, silly me. Okay, I have this one over here. Yeah, it's pretty dang close. Now, if you ever do one that has eyes on it, if it's okay with your teacher, you could make them googly looking if you want to. They don't have to be perfect looking. They, you can you could have them cross-eyed. You could have them going straight up or straight down. But check with your teacher. Um, I know sometimes kids like to be a little bit creative with what they're doing, and that would be that would be one way you could do it. Okay, so I have all of my pepperonis in the correct places, and. Uh, I'm going to start sewing one of them on here and then I will let you sew on your own. 
So I'm going to do a running stitch and you're probably wondering, what the heck is that? That's not a spool. I have uh, had a bobbin with some red thread on it and I decided rather than hunting up for a spool of red thread, I would just use the stuff that's on here. Um, so find the color that's closest to the, the one that you are attaching. You're going to tie a knot on one end and remember, there are a couple of different ways to do it. If you don't do it exactly like me, that's okay. You just need to have it big enough that it's not going to uh, come undone. And if you notice, I only put one pin in each one of these, but I'm going to work on this one. And I think I'm going to put another pin in there just to kind of keep it from wiggling around too much. Okay, again, I am right-handed, so I am going to be moving counterclockwise. If you're left-handed, it might be easier for you to, to work clockwise. And if you notice, I have this part scrunched up in my hand. I have to hold this up so that I can take the needle in and out. You cannot do this against the table. I need my pillow so it's up a little higher. All right. So I start with my thread and my needle on the back, so my knot's on the back, and then I'm going to do that little dolphin's stitch in and out. Oh, this needle is so much easier than the one I was using for the running stitch. In and out. Make sure that they are about an eighth of an inch long and they are about an eighth of an inch apart. When you pull your thread after you've taken the stitch, make sure that you don't pull too tight because we don't want this edge to pucker up. Let me scoot in just a little bit and you can see me take a few and then I am going to go on my way so you can go on yours. Let, there we go. So about an eighth of an inch away, I go in and out. And if you notice, I am using this hand to bend the fabric so that it'll come up where I want it to. And my thread came undone. Now, why don't you use a double thread for this? Well, you could use a double thread. And if that's what your teacher wants you to do, then use a double thread. The problem with a double thread, though, is if you ever have an error, it's a real pain in the behind to try to get those stitches out because you have to cut the thread by the needle and then you have to re-thread both ends through. Um, and this doesn't need to have heavy duty stitching on it. All right, two more and then I'm gonna be on my way. Okay, keep going all the way around. If you run out of thread or if your thread gets to be about three or four inches long, you need to take your needle to the back and tie a knot and then start with a new thread. You cannot tie a thread onto another thread. You have to start over each time. If you have a big piece, do not use a huge long piece of thread because this stuff is polyester and it will twist like crazy. So just about from your fingertip to your elbow or maybe a little bit higher than your elbow, don't make it longer than that. Otherwise, it's just gonna create problems for you. So I will be back when these are all sewn on and we'll do the next step. Bye for now.